Thank you very much. Good morning for everyone. Uh, here is very early in Argentina, it's 5 a.m. Uh, so uh, it's quite early for a Saturday for me. And uh, I would like uh, to, to thank you very much for this wonderful and kind invitation. And uh, thank especially to Dr. Gorilla for his leadership at this conference. And my deepest gratitude to Virginia Lynch not only for her teachings, but most of all, especially for her friendship and kindness. Uh, let me share with you uh, some of my thoughts about human rights and nursing and forensic nursing. Uh, you know that uh, we are used to work in the interrelation between forensics and law. And we take for granted that judges, prosecutors and defense attorneys she had some uh, training and knowledge about criminology, criminalistics, legal medicine, and crime scene investigation. But uh, what happens when a gunshot wound victim arrives at the ER, or when a drug addict rushes into the ER because of an overdose, or when a sexual victim seeks for help at a health setting? Are physicians and nurses prepared not only to assist the victim from their own medical and nursing expertise, but also to act and assist courts and police forces to gather and to preserve evidence so that the bad guy could be apprehended, brought to trial, prosecuted, and sentenced. Uh, nowadays, clinical forensics, forensic epidemiology, forensic documentation are an important part of clinicians and nursing skills in order to assist the victim to collect and to preserve the evidence and to act as one of the best reliable witnesses courts, prosecutors, and defense attorneys can find. Nurses are the very first people a victim arriving at a health setting meets. They can tell by firsthand the victim's attitude, fears, and needs. They not only collect physical evidence, but they also document the victim's saying in the chart. They are trusted people for the victim and her family. So uh, I would like to, to introduce to all of you uh, a report of a sexual abuse case which happened in uh, Buenos Aires province in my country. And that was referred to my hospital, uh, which is in the city of Buenos Aires, in capital city. Uh, and let me tell you that what I hope is that I could be able to show you the hard work that is done at the pediatric health setting, especially at the ER unit, when a crime victim arrives or is referred to be first aid because of her criminal wounds. I will, we hope that all of you will figure out the way forensic principles are followed by clinicians and nurses which are properly trained. Training in forensics is so important, not only on health settings in large well-known cities, but humanitarian and catastrophic situations would also require health professionals to be proper trained. And the pandemic just show us this is really true. Some of the main roles nurses are called to play here is, for example, collecting and preserving the evidence as witnesses before court uh, to prevent revictimization, to grant victims' rights. Uh, and uh, this will lead us to address the importance of the clinical chart as documentary evidence of the victim's statement as an account of all the crime details. And uh, finally, I hope that I will be able to highlight physicians and nurses' role by assisting crime victims in their health and mainly in the collection and preservation of crime evidence and as a privileged witnesses of the criminal modus operandi of the victim's direct and immediate statement and of the health consequences the perpetrator's criminal behavior has on the victim and her family. Uh, let me introduce you to this real case that I had professionally assisted in my hospital and that I hope it will be an example of the practical application of forensic principles and training. Uh, my patient was uh, Rose. She was 10 years old. She was a little girl. Uh, she lived in uh, Buenos Aires province. 
and uh, she was brought to my hospital with her body was uh, full burnt with 50 percentage burnt A, B and B and she was sexual abuse. Uh, the incident was, uh, happened on June 18th in 2008 uh, in a road at uh, more or less 6 p.m. Um, at that time uh, here in Argentina is winter, so it's really pretty dark. Uh, she was riding a bike like all little girls do uh, when uh, she was suddenly crashed by a car uh, which uh, throws her to the ground. Although the accident was not serious and she was, she just had a few scratches, uh, a man gets out of the car to help her and offers to take her to the hospital for her care. Uh, this man hoists her into the car at the front and places the little girl's bike in the trunk. But uh, instead of heading to the nearest hospital, the man wanders into the forest where he sexually abuses the girl several times. Then uh, he sets her on fire and believing her dead, he abandons her. Uh, she was brought to my hospital. She was lucid, vigil, stable and compensated. She reported the sexual abuse and later intentional burn with unspecified fire uh, that now, this was a special uh, memory she had because she has a partial amnesia of the episode. Uh, she remembers walking up surrounded by fire and was rescued near the place of the incident. Uh, a truck driver uh, was driving down the road uh, when he observes a fire in the forest and uh, fearing the fire might spread he parks his truck aside, uh, he gets out and walks over to see the magnitude of the fire. Uh, he um, suddenly observes that within the circle of fire, something was moving. Uh, believing that it could be an injured animal, he tries to rescue it only to find, uh, to find out that uh, it was my patient, this little girl. Uh, Somehow, uh, the, this man, this kind man, manages to put out the flames and to rescue the little girl, put her inside the truck and take her to the nearest hospital. Uh, Rose remains in my hospital for 63 days. 34 of them were in an intensive care unit. Uh, I just meet her uh, um, um, a week later and uh, she arrived at my hospital and uh, the uh, psychologist told me that she was suffering from PTSD. Uh, so uh, all the team gathered around and uh, we tried to just establish our goals with this uh, little girl. The first goal was to assist her and to assist her, her family, to protect her and uh, we were sure that uh, one of our goals and one of our duties was to preserve the evidence. Uh, for that, we just developed at my hospital a protocol and we were trained enough to know how to, to gather the, the evidence and to protect it. Uh, but uh, we also need to just do the diagnostic and uh, just to establish what kind of treatment we were going to deliver. Uh, and this place us in a dual position, uh, position as on one part as health professionals and on the other as a forensic expert. Uh, that means that we should be properly trained to know not only to assist the victim, medical assist the victim, but also to know how to preserve the evidence so justice can be done. And uh, we were sure because we are training this that uh, the clinical chart was really important because it's the only medical document that has a legal importance in health law. Uh, all that is done with the patient, decision making, therapeutic alternatives, bioethical dilemmas, relevant medical findings, labs results, patients and their representatives uh, say in the needs uh, are written in the chart. And uh, in my country, the charge uh, is considered foolproof at courts of medical decision in a patient. What is not written in the charge is presumed as having been done 
and it's anonymous probandi in uh, on the health profession. But uh, we also know for experience that uh, health professionals assisting uh, criminal victims, we are also witnesses. Uh, so uh, can, we can stand trial not only to tell what she had done with the patient, but also to tell how the patient felt, what she said, what she feared, what she was longing to when she arrived at the hospital. And this is a position that for, let's say, a very huge part of health professionals uh, just carried out fear of liability because, uh, you know, courts for health professionals are not a well-known place. So uh, there's some kind of fear that what we can say, we can, what we can show uh, can be also used uh, just to, uh, you know, call for response for health professionals. Yeah, in, in this uh, framework, uh, let me introduce you uh, to what is uh, the concept of public health legal preparedness. Uh, public health and emergency preparedness have become a central concept in the current restructuring of various regional, national, and global level public health and emergency management agencies and systems. Uh, in the early 21st century uh, has witnessed an important shift in the way the national governments view the role and functions of their public health systems. One element of this shift has been an increasing recognition of the need to closely integrate public health, acute care, and emergency management systems. Uh, public health emergencies uh, can de deal with infectious disease outbreaks, as the pandemic, current pandemic, natural disasters, terrorism, and is based in four core elements, laws like statutes, ordinances, regulations, protocols, and implementing measures, competencies and skills of those who make, implement, and interpret the law, information critical to those multidisciplinary practitioners, and uh, coordination across sectors and jurisdictions and it needs interaction at the national states, courts, health professional and forensics level. The, uh, the core functions of national public health systems have historically included regulatory surveillance, health protection, health promotion and disasters response activities. Yet the new global environment in which national public health systems operate has led to a higher profile for preparedness and the capacity of public health systems to be ready for or respond to various types of public health threats, including pandemic influenza, wet style, virus, or bioterrorism. In terms of its global significance, the focus on preparedness has led to increased governmental attention on the development and maintenance of public health systems, including workforce competencies, organizational level capacities, and systems level operations to improve disaster response. Traditionally, in this framework, the concept of first responders to an emergency incident has referred to firefighters, law enforcement officials, or emergency medical services uh, personnel. But uh, more recently, the concept has expanded to include other personnel, such as emergency room physicians and nurses, epidemiologists, infectious disease specialists, and hospital and public health administrators. So, uh, Training and exercising are critical elements for having an emergency plan that works. Training enables personnel and organizations to become familiar with their roles in an emergency situation and to develop important and necessary skills. Exercise uh, provides the opportunity to validate logistics, which is the planning and execution of field operations. Uh, in in the case of Rose, my patient, uh, each nurse that assists uh, my patient wrote down each single word Rose said, each memory, each detail, day by day. And let me tell you, that helped catching the perpetrator. Uh, our patient, Rose, remembers every single detail of the criminal behavior. So she described the car, she described the person, she described her feelings. Each day 
we just go a step forward on her statement. Her medical record was the evidence. Uh, the medical records just speak for her. And believe me, the nurses were her boys. Uh, we, we could manage to have the perpetrator sentenced to 30 years in jail without parole. And let me tell you that uh, I am such honored to work with these nurses because uh, nurses took care of this little girl's wound. They speak up for her, they protected and guarantee her individual rights, among them human right to health, privacy and justice. They gathered the evidence and handed it to the courts. Uh, nurses were there to help this little girl Rose to heal her physical wounds, but also her soul. Uh, and let me tell you, it's not just forensics, it's not just nursing, it's not just justice to be done. Uh, for me, it was, and it is simply unnecessary edits of care. So thank you very much.